we don't know if dolphins have a language. I just sense that they're so curious, like they want to be able to say more and do more, and as, as we do, right? There's times when, like this old wise dolphin is just hanging out with you in the water, looking in your eyes, floating there for 10 minutes. And you just go, what can be so interesting to a wild dolphin about a human? Dr. Denise Herzing, for about 30 years now, has been collecting data on the spotted dolphins of the Bahamas. She's been called the Jane Goodall of the sea. She's hoping to develop true two-way communication with dolphins, kind of a dolphin Rosetta Stone. I'm interested in dolphins because of their large brains and what they might be doing with all that brain power in the wild. We know that their brain to body ratio, which is a physical measure of intelligence, is second only to humans. I created the Wild Dolphin Project to study wild dolphins and see how complex their communication system was or if it represented some kind of language. There's limitations to what kind of signals dolphins can and will produce when they're in a small tank swimming in a circle. So I wanted to see them fighting and mating and feeding and playing and being wild dolphins. We know dolphins have passed the test for self-awareness. Self-awareness is used as a measure of do you comprehend who you are relative to other animals. It's just considered a higher level of consciousness. We work primarily in the northern Bahamas. The beauty of the Bahamas is clear water and it's shallow, so it's relatively safe from predators for researchers in the water. It turned out Atlantic spotted dolphins, they were a really great species to observe underwater because they get spots with age. We're really able to track the individuals. We track their relationships, moms and calves, and over time, their siblings and offspring. So the big picture is who are they in their society? How do they interact with each other? What are the signals they use? And that's the framework we use for everything we do. The trick with dolphin communication still is knowing who's making the sound. So if you really want to look at dolphin to dolphin exchanges, you have to be able to localize the individual. This is a system that allows us to look at what dolphin is making the vocalization at what time. It gives us this. The red squares represent the dolphin that's vocalizing. Our grant from the Templeton World Charity Foundation under the Diverse Intelligence Program is really fantastic. And we're using it to be really focused to figure out the language question. <laughs> Dolphins make basically three types of sounds. They make frequency modulated whistles and a special type of frequency modulated whistle is called a signature whistle. So this is one dolphin making his signature whistle. As we understand it, he's using his signature whistle to just broadcast who he is. It's his name. And he's saying hello to us, I think, basically. The whistles travel, at least in our study area, three to five miles. So you could, you know, hear your friends calling your name that far away. Then dolphins also make echolocation or sonar clicks, primarily used for navigation and hunting. Then we have the third sound called first pulse sounds. And these are social sounds that you would hear during fighting, mating, that sort of thing. First pulse sounds are the most frequently used sounds in dolphin communication, but the least studied because they're hard to categorize. We don't know how information is encoded. This is part of the mystery of their communication system. We simply have not had the tools to look at non-human communication adequately. 
until now. The evolution of artificial intelligence, neural nets, deep learning, all these tools will finally give us a chance to look in powerful ways at other types of sounds that are more difficult for humans to categorize. What it's letting us do right now is take a semi-objective look at how dolphin sounds cluster in categories, and it throws it out to us as this sound type is one cluster, this sound type is another cluster. We can look at is there order, is there structure, is there grammar to their sequences of sound types? Are there rules? Because language has rules, right? Our preliminary work suggests that they definitely have some structure and order to their sounds. Then the question becomes, how do you then really call it a language? I mean, animals and humans could still have order to their communication, but it might not be what we call language. What we want to know is when they're eating fish on the bottom and they're making sounds, are those sounds just for hunting the fish? Or are they talking about what they had for dinner last night? So the next level is to add metadata to it, things like the context. So say I have a stream of sound, and on the video I have a mother chasing a calf, because the calf is out of control, she's disciplining him or her. Now I have another stream of sound that's similar, but the video and the data shows me that this is a male chasing a female for courtship, not a mother chasing a calf for discipline. And then how do we interpret it? That's actually the, the biggest challenge, really. But AI will get us most of the way there, and then we still have to use a bit of human ingenuity and metadata and context to try to interpret meaning. We're going to recruit some data sets from other researchers, probably primarily dolphin and whales, and see if we can pull out structure and rules from their data. So we can really create a tool for other researchers, not just us. And that's how you really enhance a field, is to create a big tool that is consistent across researchers. So you can start asking questions about not only bat communication, but are there any universals between how dolphins communicate and how bats communicate and even how humans communicate. It's a real privilege to be able to be around dolphins who are behaving naturally. Probably one of the most powerful feelings is when a mother dolphin brings her new little calf over and, and shows them to you. <laughs> There's nothing as powerful as having another species really look you in the eye and interact with you in that way. It makes me want to know what they're thinking even more. You know, I think curiosity seeks curiosity and intelligence seeks intelligence. What keeps my interest and passion going is the belief that there's more to be discovered and that they very possibly have a language. If we want to understand it, we have to figure out a way in. It'd be fantastic to have that tool to understand these other minds on the planet, period.